Good morning, Benz. On today's episode, we'll catch up with Mitchell, learn about the history of promposals, and get a history lesson from Manuel. I'm Abby Hopkins. And I'm Jay Zimmer. And, and you're, you're watching, watching BCC TV. Okay, Abby, what's going on in the news this week? The world-famous Swedish DJ Avicii died this week in the country of Omen. Police have ruled out any suspicious causes as people around the globe mourn the artist's death. In a surprising turn, North Korea is seemingly moving towards peace as they scheduled meetings with longtime enemies and claim to be shutting down nuclear test sites. Still, no one can be sure what the regime is really getting at. Marvel's Infinity War debuts tonight, and fans are excited to pour into the theaters in what is supposed to be the largest opening weekend ever, shattering box office records. In BCC News, next week is Sexual Violence Awareness Week. There will be statistics around school, a movie showing, spoken word, and more. So be sure to go be on the lookout and check social media for details. Are you looking for a fun way to spend a Sunday morning in May? Look no further than the AK and Family Fun Walk through Bethesda. The Rescue 1 Run 8K is a road race owned and hosted by the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad. Meeting all pre proceeds benefit the Rescue Squad. The race will be on Sunday, May 6, beginning at the fire station, which is located at 5020 Battery Lane. There is only a short amount of time before AP and IB exams start, so make sure you're ready and prepared. Back in my day, we had exams in every class. Seniors, please take the short end of the year survey that was emailed to your MCPS emails. You must be logged into your MCPS account to take it. For people bringing a date to prom that doesn't go to BCC, you need to fill out the guest forms that can be located on the school's website. The earlier you get it done, the better. I wonder what Mitch is doing. To be honest, I have no idea as I wrote the script at 1.32 a.m. without texting Mitch first. I'm proud that you're becoming self-aware of your lack of time management. Facts. It's the same with studying. Studying, a topic that took me nearly the entire school year to get to, highlighting the educational value of this segment. With AP and IB exams coming up, I decided that it was time I whipped myself into shape and learned how to study effectively and efficiently, because there's no better time to reinvent yourself as a student than halfway through fourth quarter. So I needed to go out of my comfort zone and do something I've never done before. Walk around the hallways and ask some BCC students for their best studying tips. Hey guys, so we're here where all BCC students do their homework, not at home, but at lunchtime in the media center. And we're here to ask Nia and other, hey Miss McCain. Hi. <laughs> are you guys studying right now? No. Not really. Oh, it really looks like you are. Yeah, we're actually posing for it. I'm like, I'm writing an article for like my German school thing. So I needed to like make pictures for it. So that's what we're doing. I just too complicated, I don't even know what's going on. This microphone doesn't even work, does it? There's, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's a nice. It's break. not gonna play out of a speaker. It's a <laughs> microphone for the camera. <laughs> right, right over there, right over there, we have someone studying right now at this moment, really in her natural habitat. This is really rare stuff, you guys. Let's go in for a closer look, come on. Hello, ma'am, are you studying right now? Yeah, I am. Do you have any studying tips for the rest of the school? Um. Work hard, play hard. No, no, only the first half. Only work hard. Don't we don't uh, we don't endorse playing very hard. That could be dangerous for yourself. Hello. Now we're speaking to the opposite side of the spectrum. We just spoke to a student who was studying, Sabrina, and now we're speaking to a man who's never studied in his life, Joel. That's actually true. I think my my tip is to uh, is to look at your uh, the GPAs of colleges and then just get baseline right where you need to be and that's how you can so be mediocre you heard it here first don't strive for excellence be mediocre <laughs> Ithaca 22 is that the um the school motto mediocris maximus <laughs> So what's the question? Are you studying right now? I am not studying. This doesn't look like it's for a class. It is not for class. 
And are you meant to be eating macaroni and potato chips in the media center while playing computer games? I am not. Um, okay, we need to go. What are your go-to study habits? Don't. What are your go-to study habits? Wait. What are your go-to study habits? Yeah. I just got a 3 out of 10 on something. Okay, then watch my segment this Friday and you'll know how to do better. Thanks, okay. Mitchell. Thank you. Okay, pay attention. Take notes. Okay. What are your go-to study habits? Well, I get home every weekday and I study from 3 to 9 p.m. <laughs> and then I go to sleep and I get eight hours of sleep and I come back to school. And then on weekends, I try to study from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. But usually I don't get all the way through it and I take a break from noon to two to eat. Okay, first of all, a break from noon to two. You are such a lazy slob. Look, everyone is different. So finding out how you best function is key to having good study habits. And if you're one of those people that never studies and still gets 100%, I hate you. Good luck to everyone, even though you won't need it. Back to you, Jay and Abby. Insightful as always, Mitchell. What's new with Barons Athletics this week, Maya and Joe? Hey, Barons, we're back with another week of sports. Our gymnastics team is on a roll, picking up another trophy at their last meet. On Wednesday, they had a meet against Springbrook and Blake got first overall. In addition to that, five girls on the team placed in the top six all around. Great job, gymnastics, and make sure to kill it at your next meet. On Wednesday, our co-ed volleyball team played Blair, fell to them 3-1 to one in a really hard-fought game. Get them next time. Our boys' volleyball team also played Bear, Blair and beat them 3-0. to zero. Last Friday, tennis had only its second loss of the season with a very close game of 43 against Wooten, but bounced back and demolished Blair 6-1 to one on Tuesday. Look for tennis to make a deep run in the playoffs as they are a powerhouse this year. Last Saturday, at our toughest challenge yet, it went like a breeze. Again, our ladies made Richard Montgomery look like fools with sticks with a dominating win, which means they won the division. Congratulations are in order to freshman Jules Capizzi for running outstanding PR in the 800 with a 227. The ceiling is the roof for the young Capizzi. Meanwhile, our boys team ran well again. Sophomore Luca Murado running a humongous PR in the 1600 running at 412. Who saw that coming? Track is a meet tomorrow up in Columbia, so we wish you guys luck. In lacrosse news, our boys had their senior night on Monday where they played Walter Johnson. The boys came out victorious, defeating WJ 12-7. On Tuesday, they also took the dub against Kennedy, finishing the game 17-1. Last week, Pagan's Army crushed Kennedy 16-4. Then they played Whitman on Friday, falling to them 16-3. On Tuesday, they also played WJ in a tough game, falling to them 15-8. They have a game this Saturday against Wheaton at WJ at 11.30 a.m., so come out and support. Their senior night is on Monday at Watkins Mill. The festivities start at 7, so make sure to be there and rep Pagan's Army. Wednesday, our Allied softball team got an 18-14 dub against Springbrook. Great job, softball. On Saturday, our girls' softball team took down Whitman 6-5, and on Monday, the girls also demolished Wheaton, finishing the game 29-10. On Friday, our baseball team also played Whitman, and to no surprise, they beat them 8-7. Baseball also destroyed Wheaton 13-1 on Tuesday. Both our softball and baseball teams clinched division titles on Tuesday. Huge shout out to softball for this was the first title in the program's history. Well, that's all I have for this week, Barons. Back to you, Abby and Jay. Thanks for that, Maya and Joe. Abby, you try to go to prom with me? Good one, but I believe it's second period. Oh, true. Uh, you try to go to lunch detention with me? Let's learn about one of BCC's pastimes. Wow. I'm so tired from last week. Can you maybe, like, tell me a bedtime story, Papa? Sure thing, Jay, my boy. Bet. What story would you like me to tell you? I was thinking, like, maybe a story about the history of prom proposals. Prom. The most important night of our lives. It'll be a beautiful evening filled with safety, responsibility, and maybe if you're lucky, your first kiss. But what's the one thing even more important than prom itself? <laughs> That's right, promposals. Promposing is the act of asking your best guy friend or, or, or gal to prom. This gesture must push one's intellectual and imaginative abilities to the limit. We all know the most creative prom posing method of choice is a poster. 
Legend has it that the first promposal took place in 1776 when George Washington and his squad crossed the Delaware with promposal signs for Martha, much to Martha's surprise. And who could forget when John Wilkes Booth promposed to Abraham Lincoln at the Ford Theater? Sadly for Mr. Booth, President Lincoln already had a date to prom. In the decades to come, this wonderful tradition slash ritual spread to all high schools around the nation, allowing brave, bold, and brave seniors to show their love to one another. At prom, your teachers will watch you and your date dance with the grace of a swan to beautiful classical music. They will be so proud of you. So remember, seniors, when you prompose, do not do it during class, because those teachers wrote your recommendations, and you don't want them regretting that decision. Some things never change. But BCC has changed a lot over the years. Let's peep the history of our fine establishment. Hey Barons, last year was the 90th anniversary of BCC and I couldn't help but notice that even though there was all this talk about the school's rich 90 year history, nobody seemed to talk about anything specific. Surely at least something must have happened that's worth mentioning at BCC since 1926? To answer this question, I did some digging and found out that the history of our school is nowhere near as boring as you might think. Now when I first started researching for this segment, uh, I found a lot of surprising things right off the bat. The first is that East-West Highway isn't actually the first or even the second location of BCC, but the third. BCC's original location was here. BCC originally sat somewhere on Wilson Lane when it first opened back in 1926. Only it wasn't called Bethesda Chevy Chase at the time, it was just called the Bethesda School, and there aren't really any pictures of it that exist anymore, and no one really knows where it was beyond that it was somewhere on Wilson Lane. The principal of the new school went by the name of Thomas W. Pyle, a name you may have heard somewhere before. The next year, a teacher named Ludell Heinemann founded the Tadler, and construction began on a new school specifically for high schoolers here, where the Leland Community Center stands today. Only not really where the Leland Community Center stands today, where the Leland Community Center's parking lot and tennis courts stand today. The original building was demolished in 1988, but 60 years earlier, in 1928, the new Leland High School was finished. The first class that graduated from BCC in 1929 actually graduated from this location, and the first ever graduate of BCC was someone named John Adair, who was also the first editor of the Tatler. In 1931, the school was finally called Bethesda Chevy Chase for the first time, and they also won their first basketball tournament, led by Bill Geikison who's probably the greatest athlete BCC has ever had. Let's break down his achievements. While at BCC, he played baseball, basketball, and soccer. He was the captain of the basketball team for two years and the captain of the soccer team for three. He also did track and field, where he set the Maryland State shot put record at 50 feet, a record that stood for 28 years, and he ran the 100-yard dash in just 10.2 seconds. Even though BCC didn't have a football team at the time, he was given a football scholarship to the University of Maryland because of his soccer skills. While at Maryland, he continued to play basketball and baseball at a high level. He also continued doing track and field, where he set the school javelin throw record. He was also great at football, playing both halfback and punter. He was named an honorable mention All-American in 1935 and 1936. He was also elected class president, and he'd later be inducted into the University of Maryland Athletic Hall of Fame. After he left college, he was picked in the sixth round of the 1937 NFL Draft by the Eagles, but he turned down this offer to attend West Point instead, where he went back to soccer and was named an All-American in 1941, and was once again elected class president. After graduating from West Point, he was approached directly by legendary former Washington Senators pitcher Walter Johnson, who asked him to play Major League Baseball. But Geikison turned down that offer too, and was deployed as a pilot in December of 1942. And of course, he ended up being a great pilot, and he quickly became the flying leader of a squadron of P-47 Thunderbolts, and earned a Purple Heart, three Air Medals, and two Distinguished Flying Crosses before he died after being shot down over Germany in May of 1941. Apparently, our football field, or lack thereof, is called Geikison Memorial Stadium. Let's hope that when they finish the addition, that gets put on a plaque somewhere, because he definitely deserves it. Now back to the school, the Leland campus was beginning to get overcrowded just a few years after it was opened, and by 1934, the county was already eyeing the Watkins Farm on the side of East-West Highway as a potential final site for the school. Construction on the new school began in September of 1935, and students moved in by 1936. 
This is what the school looked like when it was first finished. Something else interesting is that the third floor of the original building was actually the cafeteria. I'd imagine that it was pretty nice to look out the windows and see something other than a brick wall. That's all the time I have for this week, Barons. Special thanks to the Chevy Chase Historical Society for providing all the old photos that I used in this segment. And back to you, Jay and Abby. Well, that's all for this week, Barons. Check back in next Friday for more news, updates, and humor. Keep the standards high, BCC. And keep the number of days before summer low. I'm Abby Hopkins. And I'm Jay Zimmer. And, and we're, we're signing, signing off. off.